Hey, I've got a surprise for you today. It's in my hands. Can you guess what it is? If you guessed, an Easter egg. You are correct because today is Easter and we are celebrating Jesus is alive. He's no longer dead. He died on the cross, but he rose from the grave. And so today we celebrate that. Can you guess what maybe is inside my Easter egg though? You may have guessed candy. You may have guessed money. Some of you probably guessed correctly though. It's empty and you aren't surprised. And so many times when we read the Easter story, we've heard it so many times we're no longer surprised. We've lost our wonder. We've lost our wow factor. So today we're going to talk about getting our wonder back, the wonder of what Jesus did for us. But also we're going to talk about who are you? If you were to tell somebody who you were without using your name, what would you say? I would probably say I'm one of my kids' moms. Like I would say, I'm Emily's mom, I'm Megan's mom, I'm Joel's mom, I'm John's mom. Or a lot of times people will introduce me as, oh, this is our pastor's wife. And I am, I'm Brother Jeff's wife. But what really is my identity based on? Who are you really? We're gonna be back in the Gospel of John and we're gonna start in chapter 13 and we're gonna see really quickly before we get to the resurrection story, who John said he was and where his identity was. So turn to chapter 13 of the Gospel of John. Remember, this is not John the Baptist. This is the disciple John that walked with Jesus for the three years. And I always tell you I learned something new when I study the Bible. And this week, I had never realized that John was probably one of the first two disciples. It talks about when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, the two of John the Baptist's disciples, Andrew, and another one may have been John. Because in the Gospel of John, John never talks about himself as I, me, but he was an eyewitness, remember? He was at so many things. So let's see how he identified himself. In chapter 13, go down to verse 23. The New Living Translation says it this way. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. The disciple Jesus loved. Let's look at another one. Go to chapter 18 now. In verse 15. Here it says, Simon Peter followed Jesus as did another of the disciples. That other disciple was acquainted with the high priest, so he was allowed to enter the high priest's courtyard with Jesus, the other disciple. A lot of people believe this is definitely John because in Acts 4, 6, it talks about him being related to the high priest. At least a John is mentioned there, and they think it was probably the apostle John, the disciple John. Okay, another one. Flip over to 19. Verse 26, chapter 19, verse 26, this is at the cross. Remember I told you John was an eyewitness to all of this, and here he is at the cross, and it says, when Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, dear woman, here is your son, and he said to this disciple, here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Again, the disciple he loved. The disciple Jesus loved. Now let's go to chapter 20, verse 1. And let's read about that first resurrection morning. And then we'll tie in what John was saying about himself. Verse 1. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. 
Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings, wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. There's a lot in that that we're not going to cover today, but so many interesting details John includes. Verse 8, Then the disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. Now we're going to stop there, but John, over and over, just to call himself the disciple, the other disciple, the disciple Jesus loved. Some people may think he was being a little arrogant, but remember Jesus had talked to James and John about, hey, if you want to be first, you've got to be last. And John never mentions his name as he writes this gospel because he learned that lesson. And so when he says he's the disciple Jesus loved, that's where he finds his identity. He remembers he is someone Jesus loved, someone Jesus died for, someone Jesus rose again to give life to. And so as believers, because it said John saw and he believed. Wow, that is such a wow factor that when we see Jesus, not with our physical eyes, but with our heart. And we realize who Jesus is and what he did for us. That's a major wow factor. We should never lose our wonder. And we should always remember our identity. If we're a believer in Christ, we are a child of God. Go back to John chapter 1 real quick. And I'm going to read this from a different translation. I just like how it's worded a little bit better. This is from the Christian Standard Bible version. It says in verse 12 of John chapter 1, But to all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God to those who believe, even in his name, to those like us that maybe we're not an eyewitness like John. John saw Jesus. For three years, he walked with Jesus. Remember, he was one of the first disciples that followed. He was a follower of John the Baptist. And when Jesus was baptized, he started following Jesus, he and Andrew. And then he was at the cross, right there, ready to take care of Jesus' mother. He was in the courtyard when Jesus was beaten. Eyewitness, and here, he is there that morning, and he saw, and he believed. That's all Jesus asks of us. That's all God asks for us, for us to see who he is, that he is real, and he loves us, and he wants us to become a disciple Jesus loved. So in thinking about this, why don't you think about some other wow things that we see every day and we take for granted. Think about a caterpillar who can come, a butterfly and fly. Think about a little bitty acorn that grows into a huge oak tree. Here's a really cool one. Think about your eyes and how God made us to see colors. You know, a lot of animals, they just see black and white. Some animals only see certain colors, but God is created within our eyes the ability to see all the different colors in the world. So today, as you're hunting for Easter eggs, I want you to be wowed and remember, Jesus is alive. And I want you to be think about when you see the color red, I want you to feel loved. I want you to remember, God loves you so much that he gave his only begotten son, that if you just believe in him and trust him as your Lord and your savior, with your life now, everything even that's going on every day is a trust with Jesus. 
but also with our eternal life. If we just trust him, he'll give us eternal life, that we should not perish. Y'all know John 3, 16. Think about that today. Don't forget that Easter is not just about the Easter eggs. It's not about just an empty egg or whatever the surprise is. Let those things remind you of the greatest surprise. That when John and Peter and Mary Magdalene went to that grave that had been sealed with a stone, that had been guarded by Roman soldiers, it was empty. So go celebrate today and enjoy finding your wow factor. Don't ever lose the wonder that Jesus is alive and he can live in us. Have a great week.